dear white women, listen. That was their way of being funny. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Will not assuage you from your guilt. Dog code. I the sun in my face. Hold on. Oh gosh. <sighs> yeah, you better. Guys, today we're gonna be taking it back to my roots and reacting to some crazy TikToks. But before we get into that, if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing on this channel, I have a Patreon, the link's in the description down below. Become a patron if you want to. Now, without further ado, let's get into these TikToks. This one says, you got one job, and this is apparently in reference to white women. Dear white women, listen. You're only playing this if you value your life is to shut the up. Listen exclusively to black, brown, and indigenous women, femmes, and non-men. Oh gosh. Ugh. We're off to a great start here. First of all, what's with the threatening nature of that video? It's coming off very aggressive, but I guess we're accustomed to that when it comes to the whole Black Lives Matter movement. It's very weird to say that you should exclusively listen to any one group of people. Not all black women think alike. I wonder if she would go through and look at my videos and see what I have to say and think that I'm a black woman that needs to be listened to by other white women. Probably not. And of course we have all of the gendered language that is being thrown on there and what she couldn't do as a blue haired leftist, she did as a blue lipsticked leftist. <laughs> oh gosh. Are we gonna get over this race narrative? When are we gonna stop splitting people into these just baseless groups that have no meaning whatsoever? As I said before, not all black women think the same. And to think that you as a white person need to exclusively listen to one race or one gender blows my mind. But here we are nonetheless. Next. I'm already scared about this one. This person is wearing what looks like puppy ears and eating from a dog bowl. My friends a bit ago described me as dog coated, which became like my favorite thing ever and now I can't be using it. Specifically, I love pointing out when my friends do something dog coded. You scare a bird away, dog coded. You dig a big hole while we're at the beach, dog coded. I, not the sun in my face, hold on. Or like, I collect bones, which is an extremely dog coded hobby. I was telling one of my friends that I literally have- I hope that is cereal in that bowl. If I come to find out that this person is eating kibble straight from the dog bowl, I'm done, I'm done. The video will be over, the video will be over. We have a squirrel buried somewhere that I need to unbury for the bones and they were like, you're you're literally a dog. Dog coded is for the things a little less obvious than me wearing a collar and ears. Like if you don't like high pitched noises, dog coded. I have a very dog coded yawn, like I squeak. Taking yourself on a little walk when you're stressed is dog behavior. Clearly my objective in entering your friend group is to expose and convert all the puppies. I entered the chat and oops, we're all dogs. If you've ever had cheese by taking a bite straight from the block, that is dog coded. I shaved the sides of my hair short, so I call them my little puppy spots. If you're walking faster than your friend group and you look back over your shoulder and smile at them to make sure they're behind you still, dog coded. This person is wearing a dog collar with dog accessories, eating from a dog bowl, has dog ears on, and is constantly looking for things that are quote dog coded from themselves and their friends. I don't know what else to say about that. We have a mental health crisis in the United States of America, and it is most definitely a crisis of identity. I can understand wanting to have fun with the things you wear, express yourself in a different way. I can even go as far as to understand and people, you know, wanting new pronouns or to pick a new name. But to identify as a dog or a puppy, just how much further can you go from there? What else is going to be the next thing to identify as? Because this is getting into improper territory. I just can't imagine how somebody functions in the world identifying as a dog like this or behaving in this way. Do they have a nine to five job? If so, what is that job? Is this something that they just do on the weekends and in their free times? And if it's something that you do in your free time, are you like wearing normal clothes and acting like a normal person and then going home and putting on dog gear? <laughs> I can't. 
I have so many questions, guys, and none of them are going to get answered. So we, we must, we must move on. This next video is astounding, okay? This young woman thinks that the phrase, good morning, you know, when you say, hey, good morning, she thinks that that phrase is somehow racist. I'm gonna let her give her explanation. You off of it, so nobody would think about what it really originated from. It was really a mockery towards black slaves and them making fun of what they did to their people when someone was hung, killed, or sold off to a different plantation. So that was their way of being funny. Did you have a good morning? Okay. <laughs> we all know what morning is, right? At least the M-O-U version of morning. That's when you are, you know, expressing grief after somebody has passed or gone. And I think she thinks that good morning is a way of throwing that in the face of black slaves. I'll let her tell it. Did you have a good cry about that person's death? Did you have a good cry about your daughter being taken away from you and sold off somewhere else? Did you have a good cry of your brother being hung yesterday? That was their way of being funny. Good morning, everyone. I don't mean to laugh because she's talking about some pretty, you know, heinous stuff, but that is most definitely not what good morning <laughs> is used for or where it came from. In fact, it long predates what she is even referring to and talking about historically, which is so wild. I don't know if she's getting the spelling confused of the two versions of morning, because when somebody says good morning, as in I hope you have a good morning or I hope you are having a good morning, there's no you in that word. I want to think this is just a failure in education and not that she's actually choosing to misinterpret what good morning means. Because a lot of people will do that. Even when a white person wants to be nice to you and say good morning or I hope you're having a good day or, or any, you know, sort of colloquial phrase of, you know, gratitude and good health. You want to throw it in their face and spin it into something that is somehow negative. Hopefully she learns the difference between morning and morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not gonna wait around for that moment. Whew, we're toughing it out. Next one. All right, guys, this person uses neo pronouns. I'm not gonna use those. What? Why? Because they're not real. Is anything in the English language real? Have you seen English? The answer is yes. There are things in the English language that are uh, most definitely real. Just use them. This is someone's identity. Like, just respect them. I don't... <laughs> no. Okay, then f*** off. You think there aren't consequences? Bye! But... Get out! Oh, God. We do, for a moment, need to take in the visuals here. I mean, this person has the colored hair, which for some reason is quintessential when it comes to this form of ideology and this way of thinking. The strange piercings, the tattoo that says them, which I'm going to only assume is the pronouns that uh, they prefer to be used. Wow, do I get a point for that? <laughs> It's just astounding sometimes. And it's interesting that the premise of this video is that the consequences for not using somebody's neo pronouns, which is just whatever word you pick out of the dictionary or out of a random book you can now use as your pronouns, the consequences of not using those for somebody who has chosen them is that you don't have to be around them anymore or deal with them anymore. I'm not sure if that is a consequence or a reward. I guess it depends on how extreme the individual who you're dealing with is, but these more extreme people with the neo pronouns and the they, them, this, and the policing language that, that seems like a reward. Not using the pronouns means that you don't have to deal with that anymore. You don't have to deal with the language police or the sensitive sallies and the people who constantly wanna have problems with everything that you're saying at any given moment. A win is a win, my friend. <laughs> A win is a win. We got a few more to go. We're gonna keep it coming. This next one is about reparations. You know I love this conversation. White people, I need you to know that your money will not assuage you from your guilt. You cannot pay your way out of this. There aren't enough reparations in the world that you can pay us. So why do you keep asking for them then? If there is not an amount of money in the world that is going to make us shut up about this issue and move on and start to act like regular people and not victims, then stop asking for the money because all over this country, there's conversations being had surrounding reparations, trying to find the equivalent to 40 acres and a mule, how many millions, uh, you know, black descendants of slaves should be paid in this country. 
I believe that $5 million in reparations is too little for the work that Foundation of Black Americans have done for this country and as well for other countries. The number is never enough. It never quells the anger. It never quells the frustration. So if there is no number, which is what I have always hypothesized, then let's stop having the conversation because it's no longer something to be entertained if we cannot come to a conclusion on this. And so you think because you write a check or you slide me something in Venmo that you're absolved and you can tell somebody, well, I gave Dr. Blay $100. I'm not racist. Dr. Blay is going to spend your $100 and still tell you that you're racist. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Is it awesome? Really? Is it awesome? <laughs> So they're gonna take the money for the reparations. Okay, so we've got that clear. They're gonna spend the money from the reparations and you're still not absolved. And it's so interesting that we even feel the need to have a discussion surrounding absolution when the white people living today did not do anything. And they are in fact not inherently racist. They're not born with some sort of racist gene in their body that they carry around with them for the rest of their lives. We know this to be true, but instead they're gonna spin this narrative because they want you to feel guilty. They want you to feel shame. They want you to be constantly held under the thumb of their victimhood. And in fact, their victimhood oftentimes makes them into the oppressor. Isn't that interesting? Because this person who is apparently a perpetual victim is now telling you that there's nothing you could pay me. There's nothing you could do for me to make up for the things that have been done in history. Mm -mm -mm. What I tell y'all, there's nothing that you can do. There'll be all these conversations about you can pay me this. You can say, sorry, I want the country to publish a formal apology and put it all in their museums and do a national bulletin about how sorry they are about the past, but she said the quiet part out loud that none of it will ever be enough because they will carry this currency of victimhood with them for the rest of their lives. So don't bother. Don't bother. We got one more, guys. Thank you for sticking around and staying strong in the face of this absurdity. Let's watch. Hi there. My name's Katie and I am a non-binary teacher. This isn't what I'd normally wear to teach, but we're closed down today for cleaning. Thanks, COVID. But anyway... I wanted to show you guys a little something and tell you about a project that I'm doing. So follow me. This is my classroom. I'm pretty fond of it. It's looking a little spare right now, but we're in a bit of a transition as far as holidays go. And this is my classroom library. And as you can see, it has a lot of books, but there's one big problem with it. None of them look or act or feel like me. So you can help by going to the link in my profile and donating to my Donors Tubes project to get more LGBTQ plus friendly books in our school from kindergarten all the way to eighth grade. Thanks. Girl, what even is an LGBTQ friendly book for kindergartners? What does that even mean? What is that showing to, to young children? And what is with this sort of self-centered mindset that the books in your classroom need to somehow be a reflection of you or need to revolve around you in some way? When you become an educator slash teacher, you are there to educate. You are not there to insert yourself, your own ideology, your own sense of who you are into the classroom. You are supposed to leave that at the door for the most part. Of course, you're meant to have a personality and share things, but not too much, right? You're supposed to leave that for the most part at the door and come to your students and do your job, which is teaching them to write and to read and to do math and science and all these other subjects that you could be focusing on. LGBT anything, straight anything, should not be at the top of your priority list. It's just so weird to me that teachers are, are thinking this way. And I don't know if it's because teachers are younger now and young people just tend to be more progressive or if we've just lost sight of what teaching is as a profession altogether. But these videos scare me. If I went into a classroom for my future children and this was their teacher, out the next day, gone the next day. Especially if I found videos like this of them on the internet talking about how we need more LGBTQ representation in their books. It's just a non-starter. Every time we do videos like this where I watch these TikToks, it really does blackpill me <laughs> a little bit when it comes to how our world is moving, the direction that we're going in, and some ideas that people have. But hopefully there's a silver lining in the fact that maybe we're all sharing that same feeling when we're watching these videos, which means there are reasonable and sane people out there that are 
are watching this stuff happen right before their eyes. I would love to hear your thoughts on some of the videos we watched today. Drop them in the comments down below. As always, if you disagree with me, I encourage healthy debate, so duke it out, but do so respectfully. And if you like this video, like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a video for you guys, which is every single day. And I will see you next time. And if you find any crazy TikTok videos like this, make sure to shoot them over to me because they might be featured in our next episode of Crazy Leftist TikToks. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you better.